Only three games into the season, and we're already talking about trade, Spurs fans. What is up, San Antonio Spurs fans? Welcome to TSR Sports. Hopefully you're having a wonderful Wednesday. Oh, there's a deal, double, double, W. Came across this article from Eric Alma about potential players that could be available for trade before the All-Star break. And I was like, you know what? Let's talk about it. By the way, go Yankees. The San Antonio Spurs want to build a contending roster around Victor Wembanyama. Duh. Things are not going to plan early, and a long-standing issue is back creating problems for the Spurs. Oh, boy. Whoops, a little too far there, TSR. They are 23rd in three-pointers made and 21st in three-point percentage so far this season. Small sample size, but it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. San Antonio's been in the bottom five to connect rate in each of the last two years. The Spurs need more shooting to unlock the offense around Wendy, maximum potential, and could add it before the February 6th trade deadline. Okay, let's continue on. There will be no shortage of available options, and training will be more difficult this season with so many teams handicapped. San Antonio's a position to strike, and here are five sharpshooters that may be available. First up, Duncan Robinson. Could there be a name more Spursy than Duncan Robinson? I think not. Robinson has been in the rumors in the, in the rumors for years, but he is in the last fully guaranteed season of his contract. His 9.8 million for 19. He has 9.8 million for 19.8 million in the books for the 2025-26 campaign. He has 9.8 million for 19.8 million. I mean, he's making 10 this year. Uh, that's just reading weird to me. So I'm assuming he's under contract for, till next year. Do the Heat finally dump the sharpshooter as they look to clean up their cap sheet? Robinson is a career about 40% three point shooter. He struggles on defense and offers little else. But there are only a handful of better pure shooters in the world. You know, that kind of. Of all due respect, sounds a little like Doug McDermott. Great shooter, struggles on defense, doesn't offer a whole lot of other stuff. Been there, done that. I'm probably passing on Duncan Robinson, even though he has a fantastic name. Seth Curry. Seth Curry, not Steph Curry, the younger brother of Warriors superstar Seth Curry, has made over 40% of his triples in six of his eight seasons where he played 40-plus games. All right, pretty solid. The 34-year-old has a lengthy injury history and is past his prime. He struggles on defense, but offers floor gravity and secondary playmaking. Teams are not leaving him open, which creates more room for Wemby to dominate inside. Not just Wemby, our other guys too. We've, we've got quite a few guys that have been showing the ability to finish above the rim and in the paint this year. Charlotte would be wise to get whatever possible for the veteran sharpshooter before the deadline. Next. Bogdanovich! And if the Spurs were to get Bogdanovich, oh my gosh, every live stream I'd be driving you guys crazy with Bogdanovich over and over again. But anyway, the 6'5 wing is a career... Look, a 6'5 player. That just fits in with like half our roster. 6'5, right? The 6'5 wing is a career 38% three-point shooter shot north of 40% in two of the last four seasons. He will make shots but offers more playmaking, defense, and shot creation than the previous options. Okay, sounds good to me. Bogdanovich is currently sidelined with a hamstring injury that will keep him out until December. Not as good. The Hawks want to contend, but could continue reshaping their roster. They traded DeJounte Murray this offseason, and Bogdanovich is no stranger to the rumor bill, but do not be surprised to hear his name being shopped again. You know, the Hawks already traded with us once recently in the aforementioned DeJounte Murray trade, or, well, not, not that trade there, but a previous trade. And I don't think they'll like that turned out. So I'm thinking they might not be trading with the Spurs again. So this is probably a no. But the two that I think could maybe happen, or at least the two that are the most intriguing, and one that I think we've talked about before in this channel in the past, is Cameron Johnson. The Nets entered a total rebuild when they traded Mikael Bridges to the Knicks. They sure did. They are room to be shopping Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, Dennis Schroeder, and virtually any veteran on the roster. So they're all in on Team Tank. Getting a 6'8 wing who is a career 39% three-point shooter would be massive. Johnson played a key role in the Suns reaching the NBA Finals in 2021 and could be a crucial piece in the Spurs returning to the playoffs. Nobody's leaving him open, and San Antonio desperately needs that shooting gravity on their rosters. The Spurs could replace Kelman Johnson with Cameron Johnson and instantly improve their offense. It would cost them some draft capital, but San Antonio has plenty of spares surely do. And you hate to cut one Johnson off your roster, but if you're getting another Johnson, then hey. And that's a bigger Johnson. All true. Any, uh, well, Anthony Simons. 
Simons averaged over 22 points per game in 2024 and is blossoming as a shooter, scorer, and playmaker. The 25-year-old has immense potential but hasn't been on a playoff team since his third, uh, since his third NBA season in 2021 with Dame. Simons would certainly get open shots and could take another leap in his distributing with an improved supporting cast. The Blazers have too many guards and need to make a move. And I think I heard that last year too. Simons feels like the most likely to be dealt and it is a chance for the Spurs to add a young elite score at a reasonable cost. The 6'3 guard is a career 39% three-point shooter too. The San Antonio Spurs will have options before the February 26th trade deadline and must upgrade their shooting. And we felt like we did that with Harrison Barnes and CP3. Uh, CP3 hasn't been shooting the ball much, and Barnes has been a little, well, just the last game he struggled. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about the two players that are on the thumbnail, the two that I could see us making a move for. I, I don't see number three, four, five, so let's focus on these two. If you disagree, of course, drop a comment down below. Cameron Johnson. The first thing that jumps out at me is he has missed a lot of games in his career. He's never played more than 66 in a season, and in the last two seasons, he's played a combined 100 games. 100. 82-game season, that's a total of 164. He's missed 64 games in the last two years. That is a concern. He is under contract for the next two years for a total of about $42 million. He is a power forward, so if we were to trade for him, would we bench or trade Harrison Barnes? What would our starting lineup look like? Would it be Wemby, this Johnson, Sohan, Vassell, and CP3 slash Castle, whatever, you know, whoever, whenever that change is made, whether it's this season or next season? Okay. The other option, Simons, has also missed a lot of time too. He's only played in 100 games in the last two seasons himself. He is under contract for one more year next season, under this year, of course, and next season for $27.5 million, and he is listed as a shooting guard. So does that mean Demis Hell would move to small forward? And again, are we benching or trading Harrison Barnes in this scenario? Because he's clearly not standing, staying in the starting lineup if we were to get one of these two players. And if we do were to get Simons, is our lineup going to be Wemby, Sohan, Vassell, Simons, and then again, CP3 and Castle? <sighs> When I look at both those starting lineup Spurs fans, are either of them good enough to win a championship? Honestly, who knows? Because we don't know what the ceiling is for a lot of the guys mentioned. In the first scenario, or in both these scenarios, we don't know Wemby's ceiling. It's obviously going to, I think it's going to be higher than what it is right now. We have no idea just how good Castle can be. We've seen glimpses of a cell ceiling, and if he can be that glimpse consistently, then he's going to be an extremely solid player. Jeremy Sohide's coming along very well this year. I think he's got a higher ceiling than we've seen the last two seasons. As far as Cameron Johnson, we've probably seen him peak already his career in Simons, and maybe as well. Maybe there's a little more room. Is it enough? I don't know. I mean, really, with the Spurs, no matter what we put them around them, right now the biggest, you know, biggest question is just how good Wemby, Sohan, Vassell, and Castle are going to be. If we can put really good players around them. I maybe one of these guys, then will that be enough? Time will tell. Time will tell. But it's going to be a fun season no matter what happens. So I know this is early to talk about this, but what the heck? I caught the article and I was kind of intrigued by it. So, of course, I wanted to share it with you. And more importantly, get your thoughts. Out of the five players, is there any in particular that you'd be like, you know what? That's the player I want on the Spurs. I hope we make a move for that guy and do get him before the trade deadline. So let me know. Hit the thumbs up, like, support the channel. And we will be live tonight at 9.30 p.m. Eastern for a little trendy action. It's Chet Holgram versus Victor Wembyama as the Spurs visit the Thunder. Chet is off to a fantastic start this season, so this should be an absolute dogfight, and I can't be wait, wait to be alive to enjoy the game with you guys. And like before, I'm going to have two TVs in the house. i got to do it. The Yankees are playing the Dodgers tonight, so I'm going to have a TV over on the left, and I'll be watching the Spurs game in front of me, but also the Dodgers and the Yankees. I'm a Yankees fan, and I don't want to miss Game 5. So it's going to be a crazy night. It should be a fun night. And thank you all for being here. If you're a Spurs fan, you haven't already subscribed, what you waiting for? Thank you. And as always, go Spurs, go.